I want to start with a question. Um, it's August. It's hard to believe it's August. Um, to me, it's a very exciting time of the year, regardless of um, the politics of the matter. Uh, we have a female candidate running. Um, I've been waiting for this day, um, again, regardless of politics, and I'm super, super excited to see um, what happens. And I'm, I'm, I'm just jazzed in a different way. Again, politics aside, um, I'm just excited to see what could happen for female executives, female entrepreneurs. Um, I'm just excited. So my question to you um, is how can we make the rest of the year better? Um, that's the question. So just want you to reflect for just a second. How can we make the rest of the year better than the first seven and a half months of the year? What would make it better for you? So take about 15 seconds and write down one idea of how you can make the rest of the year better. Um, Robert, you're just joining. Welcome. Um, we're just getting kicked off and uh, we're just started. We're starting with a question. And the question is, how do we make the rest of the year better? So take about 15 seconds and then we'll keep mo moving forward. Okay, so the reason why I asked that question is Shifco is my passion. Obviously, anybody that knows me knows that. And I asked myself that question in July of 2021. So in July of 2021, 53.4% of our members had doubled their revenue. And that wasn't good enough for me. And I asked the question, how can we make that number higher? And the answer, what we implemented, I'm going to actually teach you the method that we put in place, which is called LEAP. We taught our members a process that I'm going to teach you today, a way of shifting your mind and your energy to a different realm. And the results of that, um, in one year, we went from 53.4% to 77%. In May of last year was 84.9%. And we use MSR, member success ratio, as a way to figure out what's working and what's not. And the reason why I share that with you is this jump that we had from 53.4 to 77, what caused that jump to happen was that we use a method that I'm going to teach you today. So I'm going to shift over to, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about um, Shiftco, but I, I'll tell you that um, the reason number one it works is our member success team focuses on every member. Second is we use what's it's called a diagnostic prescriptive map to help you figure out where to focus. But this third area um, was really what caused the jump is we place an emphasis on supporting members and in moving into a high performance mindset. And in today's session, I'm going to teach you that method. Obviously, when somebody's a Shifco member, we go a lot deeper in that. For those of you that that are Shifco members, you can you know start on this mindset work right away. But I'm actually going to teach you. Um, for those of you that are not members, I'm going to teach you the method today, so you can start using it. When we say a high performance mindset, what does that mean? People that have a high performance mindset share two things in common. One is their behavior. They take action to apply knowledge. Second is their willingness. They have a desire to master performance mindset techniques. Well, what blocks willingness um, is really the question. So either somebody struggles with behavior so they're not they're unfocused and they're not taking action or they struggle with willingness. Today we're going to be exploring both of these but in particular we're going to be looking at willingness. If you plot those out and you really look at what that looks like, if somebody is willing, the high willing but they're not taking action, it's almost always because they're stuck in fud, fear, uncertainty and doubt. If somebody is not willing um, and is not taking action, they get stuck. And they basically, it's 
two steps forward, two steps back, two steps forward, two steps back. Um, and then if you say, okay, what if they're sort of willing, um, but they're not, uh, or, or they're taking behavior action. So do, 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 I'm sort of willing, I'm taking action. Then you get this unfocused and inconsistent activity where we want to see people is we want to see them in the motivation to mastery box. And that is the upper right-hand corner where somebody is very willing, but they're also taking action. That is what is a high performance mindset. And right now, if you're watching the Olympics even a little bit, you are seeing people in a high performance mindset where their behavior is, they're taking action, they're putting in the, the work, they're working out on a regular basis, they've committed their life to their endeavor, but they also have heart, they have a willingness, a low, uh, I think it's Niles, I can't remember how to say his name, he was walking proof of that when he won that race a couple of nights ago. And, you know, what caused it is he was so willing that he did everything possible and he basically stretched his chest out. And that's how he won that race is by that one little, you know, a millimeter of a second. But it was his willingness to do the, the impossible, even though he, you know, technically he shouldn't have won, but he was so willing and so committed that his motivation was so high that that's how he cracked that nut. So again, let's come back to this. How do we make the rest of the year better? Well, how we make the rest of the year better is one is we want to really amplify our willingness and really get our heart and our soul and our energy into it. And then we want to follow it up with taking action. So the answer to how can we make the rest of the year better is we want to increase the energy, which is going to connect to willingness. And then we want to focus our action to do what it is that we want to accomplish. So I'm going to teach you this process. Um, and again, make sure you stay all the way to the end, because at the end, I'm going to put the whole process together for you. And you'll have a nice little snapshot of how to do it. The first thing you need to know is what is it you want to accomplish? So we're gonna use this in, in a business terms. I'm gonna give you about one minute um, and then I'm gonna have a couple of people um, tell us what it is you want to accomplish. So you've got one minute, ready, go. And then after this minute is up, I'm gonna have a couple of people volunteer to describe what it is that you want. All right, the minute is up. Who would like to share what it is that you want for the rest of this year? Terry, I'm happy to share. Um, I oh, have Tiffany. two wants. I have two wants. Am I allowed to have two? You can have two. Go for it. Okay, so my first is that I want to land one new retainer-based client, specifically retainer-based. I have several project-based, but I really want to have a retainer-based client before the end of the year. And my second want is I want to complete my book manuscript. Perfect. So you got very specific um, things that you want to accomplish. What Tiffany gave us are goals. And what we're going to be talking about today is how do I get my mind and my heart and my energy in alignment with that goal? And what happens if, if you don't have a clear goal, then it's really hard to get in alignment with that goal. So Tiffany has very specific goals. Um, and I love that. And the second part of this is we're going to look at what gets in our way of accomplishing those goals. And then the process I'm going to teach you is gonna eliminate what holds us back so we can achieve our goal. So Tiffany, I love that, it was a great example. Does somebody else wanna share what you want? One or two things. Hello, I'll speak up. So uh, 
I, I am looking for, or what I'm wanting is a revenue pipeline. Uh, cause I need to make money <laughs> and then, uh, emotional momentum, I think is the best way to encapsulate it. Perfect. Yeah. You're going to get a dose of that here in a second. So I love that. <laughs> Let's have a, we got time for two more people to describe what you want. Anybody want to take that spot? I'll go next. Okay. Quilla. Um, Mine is to develop a business model that will allow me to niche down a little bit more so that I can improve my marketing, so that I can get the revenue, so that I can expand my team by one to two people. Now, I love that. So what Aquila gave us, and I contrast that to Tiffany, is Aquila really wants to implement a strategy. So Whereas Tiffany's example um, and, um, and Amy's was more of a goal, Aquila gave us a strategy. And I want you to see the difference of that because obviously implementing a strategy is a little more complicated, but the method that I'm going to teach you about how to get your mind and your energy in alignment with what it is you want to accomplish is going to allow that not to matter as much. So I just wanted to contrast that for just a second. Brandon, it's so good to see you. Um, so glad you're here. We've got time for one more person to share what you want to accomplish. Any takers on that? I guess I can go. <laughs> In terms right. of uh, what, I've, what I've been really focusing on. So the rest on, of the year, Brandon. The rest of the year, I want to be able to. So currently, my assets under management on my. Uh, so I work as an advisor. So my investment portfolio for client um, amount managed that I manage right now is over 1.3 million. So my focus by coming into the end of this year is to reach over 2 million. And so the strategy that I focused on towards that was be able to have more attention towards my overall clientele um, in terms of just be able to have regular follow-ups just to see how they're doing, whether they want to make adjustments to their overall plan. Because I realized that how what really brought me good enough revenue coming in the pandemic years in 2021 was just working with my existing clientele base and how we um, how I really focused more in terms of... Um, so one of the bigger cases that I just recently got on, uh, in June was through a client of mine's through her aunt and her mom that recently visited here from Canada and how they were having not the best relationship with their current advisor and how they wanted to move their stuff with myself. And they, the first amount that like we dealt with was like over 30 K then it was another hundred thousand. And then still with the, the, the aunt, I'm dealing with another 140 K as well by just working with referrals and as well as for the sake of just focusing on doing a lot more seminars and workshops. So out of that, I, uh, I did a table in the, the month of May in a little university close to like my area in Canada, um, how I was able to get over at least 21 leads. Out of those 21 leads, um, I was able to have at least two to three speaking spots. One uh, seminar that I have set up for organization coming up on Monday and how that's going to give, give me a consistent like source of leads because I built that relationship with the community managers there and they value financial literacy. So right, my focus is really to really get into that. So I've been quite busy for myself and I have <laughs> is the reason why I've been on like the meetings itself. So it's just not a little thing to you what's going on as well as my mentor. I love that. School. Yeah. So you have a goal and a strategy, right? And, yeah. um, and I'm going to encourage you to tighten, tighten up a little bit so we can really focus and we're going to talk about focus here in a minute, but we're going to tighten it up just a little bit for you, Brandon. I basically want to have an X increase in, you know, client, holdings or client activity so that we can quantify that just a little bit. And the way that you do that, which is the second part that you described is the strategy. I'm going to encourage you to stay focused on the goal so you don't get lost in that. Does that work for you, Brandon? 100%. Okay. So now everybody hopefully has what you want. Now, second question is what's standing in your way? Um, and typically there's two things that are standing in, um, people's way and can be others, um, not sure what to do, or maybe not confident enough that you can do it. Now, I'm not going to ask you to share this because it's personal, but I do want you to take another minute and ask yourself, honestly, what's standing in my way? Is it belief in myself? Is it time? Is it, I'm, I'm not exactly sure the steps to take. Is it, maybe uh, old voices from the past. Um, but I want you to, to take a minute and, and be honest with yourself. Again, I'm not going to ask you to share that. Um, we might not know each other well enough to do that. But 
I want you to be honest about what's standing in your way. And then we're going to use this methodology to break through that resistance. So take about a minute. All right, so the reason why the second question is so important is our doubts occur at a subconscious level. What that means is if I'm not sure what to do or I'm afraid I can't do it or I've got stories in my head about where I failed in the past, those doubts and things start to in, get infused in our brain at a subconscious level. And the reason why that's so dangerous is we're not aware that those doubts are there. And part of my secret to success is I constantly ask myself, what do I want to accomplish and what's standing in my way? And I take time on a monthly basis to really explore that because I want to see what my negative thought patterns are at a subconscious level. Because we don't, we're not used to talking about our doubts. We're not used to talking about the fact that I'm not exactly sure what to do. We want to show everybody we got it all figured out. We want to tell ourselves we got it all figured out. And we're not really good at that self-awareness, peeling it back, to be honest, about I'm not sure I can, I can handle the balance of it. I, I feel pulled because of personal things and business things. And um, you know, or wow, in the past, I didn't always follow through whatever the story is, we need to pull it out of the subconscious so that we can move it out of the way. So the reason why this matters is our ego, which drives us, it's a, it's active part of our brain chemistry, crave, craves certainty, crave certainty. And when you're an entrepreneur, certainty <laughs> is hard to come by. Um, I've been an entrepreneur for going on three decades. I've been a conscious entrepreneur for 14 years. I still have doubts of insecurity, doubts of periods where I'm doubting myself, times when I feel like I'm not sure I can do it, even times when I want to quit. And it's like, forget this, I'm just going to get a job. After all this time, I still struggle with that. And that's because our human brain is wired chemically to crave certainty. So what what happens is when whenever whenever we're not sure what to focus on, it causes doubts to creep into our brain which it goes into conflict with the part of our brain that craves certainty. When we fear change or doing things in a new way, we get stuck. Um all of these things, anytime in uncertainty creeps into our mind and our body, it slows down our ability to reach new goals. So the method that I'm going to teach you is a way to put your mind and your body into a state of certainty so that you can achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve. Now, we're again, uh, we're getting great examples of this right now um, with the Olympics, uh, and I study athletes and I study successful entrepreneurs and I try to look for what they have in common. How do elite athletes respond to fear and uncertainty? I'm gonna use Simone Biles and um, Suni Lee. Um, we all know the story, most of us probably know the story of Simone Biles, what happened four years ago and um, what it took for her to get back up and go to another Olympics, um, you know, was unbelievable. She was afraid. She was uncertain. She could do it. She was afraid the twisties would come back. She had all these voices in her head. Suni Lee, the other um, Olympian who did really well in gymnastics this year, had numerous uh, health challenges, major health challenges. Even six months ago, she didn't think she'd be able to go to the Olympics. 
But what elite athletes and quite honestly, great entrepreneurs are able to do is they're able to shift their mind and their body so that the fear and uncertainty gets released. And that's the process that I'm going to teach you today. So now I want to give you one other thing, and then I'm going to teach you the process. And I, I want you to clarify what your business challenge is. So you talked about your goal now, and, you t and we, we looked at what's holding us back. Now I want you to, to develop a little clarity of what's the challenge. Is it, um, Amy, you mentioned you want to increase your pipeline. Um, I don't want you to share the fear, but what's an example of the challenge to doing that? So Amy, can we use yours as an example to show people how to get clarity? You said Absolutely. you wanted a pipeline. You, yes. You've got you know something holding you back. Now let's get clear. What's the real business challenge? So what would you say your business challenge is? Um, so let's make sure I'm, I'm jumping down the, the right school of thought. Um, but, but for me, it's, it's consistency in, um, out, it, outreach marketing. Perfect. So what you just did is you took the first part and potentially the second part, I, it doesn't matter. And you basically got really clear. My challenge is I need a way to consistently out, uh, have outreach to my target market, right? Correct. Perfect. Aquila, let's use yours. You've had a strategy. You've got something that's holding you back, which I don't need you to share. Now let's say, okay, what's the challenge to you achieving the strategy and working through whatever's holding you back? What would you say it is? Um, it, now, it, now that I have the niche, it's the marketing for me as well. Okay, so wow, I've got the niche. Now I got to figure out how to market to them, right? Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Okay, so what's happening right now is you're going from the goal and the aspiration. You're take you're being honest with yourself about what's holding you back, but now we're getting clear. And clarity is an important part of leaping to new levels. We need to be more clear. And again, I'm going to show you a a uh, process to get your mind and your energy in alignment, but we first have to be clear. So everybody take a minute and do what we just did with Amy and Aquila and write down, given, you know, number one and number two, what is the business challenge ahead of me? And then we're going to learn the method to shift our mind and our energy. Take about a minute and then I'll, I'll have a couple of people volunteer. Um, see you back here in a minute. All right, anybody want to share your business challenge? I can share mine, um, Terry, or one me. of mine. So I focused in on the goal that I had related to moving to more one retainer-based client. And one of the challenges that I have consistently experienced is moving the CEO's mindset from an immediate need to a long-term opportunity. Wow. Which is how that I'm is landing huge. in this project versus retainer world. Oh, that is huge, right? And, and so the question for you is, are you not talking to the right people? That could be. Are you not talking to them in the right way, you know? So, yeah. you know, kind of noodle on that just a little bit is, you know, that in order to get to retainer work, you need to have CEOs that think more long term about their marketing strategy. Yeah. All right. Well, what's underneath that? Is it not the right people or I'm not talking or I'm not reaching them in the right ways? Yeah. Hugely insightful. All right. Somebody else uh, share your clarity for your business challenge. I'll go. <laughs> All right, Brandy, go for it. 
it, for me, it's just it, it consistency and uh, not finding ways to convert properly. Okay, so consistency and conversion. Consistency yeah. and conversion. Consistency and conversion. Love that. We've got time for one more. Anybody else want to share? I'll expand on mine. Um, the the other items would be the structure to support any growth. So I don't have all my systems in place already. If I get the additional work um, managing it all. Perfect. So you've niched down, check. You need to d figure out how to market to that niche, check. And then after that, you've got to get the systems, the processes, the people maybe to make it more scalable. Is that right, Aquila? That is correct. Okay, so clarity. Clarity matters. Hopefully everybody's got that challenge clarified. It's the lack of clarity that creates uncertainty, guys. It's the lack of clarity that creates uncertainty. Uncertainty does not cause unclarity. It is not being clear that causes uncertainty. Now that you're a little more clear, you probably notice you're a little more excited. You're a little more ready to go. You're a little more like, maybe I can do this. You're starting to kind of feel those juices flow because we got clear. And it takes that process of what do I want? Being honest about what's holding you back and then clarifying what is the challenge? What is the mountain I'm trying to climb here? Um, and, and again, for um, somebody like Simone Biles, her challenge was she needed to overcome fear of failure. She needed to be okay and be good enough, basically, regardless of whether or not she won a gold medal. And she talked about that ad nauseum is getting a bronze in this and getting a silver in that. She had to be, become okay or not meddling at all when she fell off of the beam. She was like, you know what? I gave it my best. I fell off the beam. I'm okay with that. What Simone did that was the perfect example of what I'm talking about. She rooted it down to what is it that I really have to be honest and, and face here. And now that I have that clarity, I'm just going to tackle that. And that's where we get into the process. So what you do when you do what we just did is you start to move yourself out of the comfort zone. The comfort zone is where you feel safe and in control and you're telling yourself, oh, don't go for that big dream. Uh, you know, oh, okay. Uh, you know, and what happens is we tend to feel fear to draw on this for just a second. So here I am, I'm wanting to achieve my goal and I start to step out of the comfort zone and then I get afraid and I go right back in the comfort zone. And most of the unclarity is the loop that looks like this. I'm going to create a new one here. Most of what creates unclarity and the lack of feeling like we can do it is this loop right here. And so what I'm going to teach you is how do you move through the fear zone? How do you move through where you're not feeling like you've got the confidence that you can do it? Um, how do you move through that? Because the faster you move through that, the faster you can achieve your goal. And basically, when you combine your thoughts and your emotions, plus a visual image, you flip what I call the success switch. And I'm going to teach you a method for how you do that. What it looks like back to this is whether or not you're in the FUD box or the stagnant box or the unfocused box. When you do this, you flip yourself into the motivation to mastery box, and that's when you achieve your objective. So the way to do that is you want to increase certainty. How do I become certain it will work? How do I become certain that I can do it? And it's a combination that I'm going to teach you today. Before I do that, does anyone have any questions before I show you the method? Remember, I told you stay to the end because I'm going to teach you the method of how to do it. We're getting ready to do that. But anyone have any burning questions before I teach you the method? Uh, quick question, Terry. Yeah. 
So <clears throat> you mentioned it, it, it's kind of broken down into three. So, so steps. So in summary, yep. it's, it's what you want, mm -hmm. what your challenge is. Or what's holding you back. What's holding, holding you, back. you back. Okay. And then what's the third again, one more time. The third step is redefined it as a, as a challenge that has clarity because one, we're, we're sometimes afraid to ask for what we want because we're afraid we can't have it. That's FUD. Secondly, sometimes we're afraid to look at our role in the failure or what we achieve and what we don't achieve. That's typically stagnant or unfocused. So what you're doing with those first two questions is you're being honest about what it is you want to create. Second, you're being honest about what's holding you back. It's fear. It's I'm not focused. Um, I'm inconsistent. You know, just be honest about it. Just own it. Then when you've answered those two and you shift over to, okay, given those two, what is the real challenge here? Sometimes the challenge is I just need to be more focused. Or sometimes as in Tiffany's example, maybe hers is I need to make sure I'm talking to the right people. If they're reactionary CEOs, why am I bothering with them? Maybe I need to go find the CEOs that are more strategic, or maybe I need to find the CEOs that grew up on the marketing side of the house and market to them. Sometimes it's a strategic move, like the ones I gave you with Tiffany. Sometimes it's, I just need to be honest about like with Brandon, he's like, I just need to focus and I need to be more focused and more disciplined. Do you see that, how those three fit together? Yeah. Other questions. That was brilliant. That was a great question. Other questions before you learn the method now of, okay, now that I've got the clarity um, and now how do I increase the level of certainty in my mind and my body? Any other questions before we learn the method of how to do that? All right, here we go. So let's talk about what it means to be in a state of certainty. Uh, uh, Noah, Noah Lyles, I think that's how you say his name. I think that's how you say, forgive me if it's not right. That dude, um, can you guys still hear me? Because I think my headsets might be going out. Let me um, see if you can still hear me. Can you guys hear me still? Can y'all hear me? Still hear yes. Me? Yes. Okay, yes. All right. So Noah Lyles, I hope that's how you say his name. Simone Biles, Suni Lee, um, uh, the swimmer whose name I can't remember right now. Um, the, the Gabby Thomas. Oh my God, that was brilliant. They know how to put themselves in a state of certainty. And a state of certainty is the key to success. A state of certainty is when you're relaxed. It's a relaxed state of trusting combined. So trusting is an emotion. I trust that I can do it. I believe in myself combined with an expectation, which is mental. Um, we get what we expect, not what we want. Uh, Noah Lyles expected to win that race. He expected it and he believed it so much that he just simply stretched his chest out and won. Simone Biles expected even after she fell or even after she stepped out of bounds on the floor that she would still do well. She got a silver medal, right? So it's a combination of your energy, a relaxed state of trusting combined with the mental game of expecting that you have the power to create what you want. And the key to that is you don't just inherit this, okay? You build it. It is a muscle. This combination that I'm going to teach you is a muscle and you build it with focus and practice. So I study athletes. I study successful entrepreneurs. I look for what they, what are their practices? What do they do? And I've did Produced a methodology um, that I call LEAP. Um, uh, it is taught in Shipco over an eight-week period called the Prosperity Challenge. If you haven't done the Prosperity Challenge, you need to visit the members-only event page and sign up to do it. It is ridiculously powerful. Um, and it's a, it's a daily practice that causes you to focus your mind and your emotions and your energy um, chemistry so that you are in alignment with whatever it is that you want to create. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it today. I'm gonna to walk you through the process. Um, and you can, for those of you that are not members, use this recording, do this process day after day after day, and you're gonna see why so many of our Shipco members are so successful because they point to this process as their breakthrough 
they do it day in and day out. I do this process once or twice a day. I try to do it twice a day. It doesn't take very long. It's minutes. But the why it's so effective is it switches your brain and your energy so you can leap forward more quickly. It's four steps. The first step, you clear your energy. And the clearing of your energy, um, there's a there's a switch that it flips for you. It's this first step has three sub steps to it. And again, you're going to have this recording. I encourage you to grab this part of the recording so you've got it. Um, the The reason why this matters is our brain is is doesn't have that certainty on, and we're feeling uncertain. So. What that means is doubts have creeped in. You know, I'm a little lethargic. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm, you know, I'm a little defocused. So we need to clear that out. And this sub process is called ABC. Um, and so I want you to do it with me. Make sure your camera is off because I'm going to be having you do some things physically and make sure you're on mute so that you can do this with me. I'm going to obviously be on camera and not muted, but I want you to make sure you're muted and your camera's off so that you're not self-conscious and you can just do like I ask. So step number one is we need to clear energy. And basically we're going to switch a part of our brain called the amygdala. And, um, and this three baby step process is going to allow our brain to switch and it is going to release chemicals in our body. You're going to feel it and it's going to feel good. And then it's going to make it easier for the for step two and step three and step four to work. So um, this first part starts with acknowledge. So the way that you do acknowledge is you say out loud, the truth is I feel and then whatever comes up, comes up. So if I did it right now, I would say the truth is I feel frustrated. Um, it doesn't matter why I feel frustrated. I just need to articulate that. Um, and then you're going to wait about 30 seconds. So I'm going to have you do it in a minute. You're going to say, the truth is I feel whatever comes up, comes up. Um, most of the time it's going to be tired, angry, frustrated, scared, um, unsure. Occasionally it'll be positive, but you're going to let whatever comes up and you need to do it out loud. Um, the truth is I feel whatever comes up and then you wait 30 seconds what you're going to feel when that happens is you're going to feel your brain when you say the truth is i feel in my case frustrated my brain is like rah, 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 and i got this negative chatter in there when i say the truth is i feel frustrated and i pause for 30 seconds you're going to feel your brain downshift and downshift and then it's going to go into neutral and then you're going to be like wow the noise stopped um, so that's the first sub step of this first step. And I want everybody to do it right now. Say the truth is I feel say it out loud and then wait for 30 seconds. Ready? Go. All right, 30 seconds are up. You probably felt your brain move from whatever was grinding away in there, that negative self-talk, usually it's negative, to basically it started to downshift. And now it's probably in neutral. And you probably are like, whoa. Okay, so that is a critical step. Basically what you're doing chemically is you are giving a signal to a part of your brain called the amygdala where your negative self-talk hangs out to stop doing that. And then you do step number two. And step number two is you're going to breathe in a very certain way. And again, I try to keep things simple. So A, B, and then obviously here in a second, you're going to hear C. Um, and so the, the breath is four breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. Now, before you do it, Again, it's about 30 seconds before you do these four breaths. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to your body. When you breathe this way, in through your nose, out through your mouth, after you neutralized your amygdala, which was acknowledged. So in, in acknowledge, you neutralize the amygdala. 
now that the amygdala is in neutral, when you breathe in this, breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, it turns on another part of your brain, which activates your parasympathetic nervous system. And when your parasympathetic nervous system kicks in, it dumps chemicals, dopamine and serotonin in particular, into your bloodstream and causes you to feel positive, okay? It doesn't work if you don't turn the amygdala off, which is they acknowledge. So we need acknowledge turns the amygdala off. Now, when I breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, nice and deep, breath number one, you can do that four times, wait for just a second, breath two, you'll start to feel this chemical reaction in your body Another part of your brain is now signaling to the parasympathetic nervous system to activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which dumps these chemicals into your body, which actually helps clear your mind and your body. So again, 30 seconds, take four breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Breath number one, you'll notice anxiety starts coming down. Breath number two. We'll notice maybe like a little lightheadedness. That's those chemicals entering your bloodstream. Breath number three. Maybe you're feeling it in your chest. And breath number four. Now just notice that negative chatter is not there. Notice how you're just feeling a little lighter. That is basically clearing the negative thoughts and the negative emotions, which have been eating away at us all day, all week, all month. And then now you can move to C, which is really just connect. And for connect, I like to just kind of place my hand on my heart and just like, yeah, we got this. And, you know, just kind of feel myself just rooting in there. Feel myself being very present. Just for, again, 15 seconds. Just feel it. Like, yeah, I'm clear now. So it's three substats. Acknowledge, breathe, connect. That clears your energy. It clears out your mind, causes your mind to be prepared and open. It clears out any fear or anxiety that was lingering in your body. Now we're ready to start the creation process. And Step number two is to center. So I'm, again, I've told you guys, I'm going to have you do weird things. I just need you to trust me. I want you to stand up. Um, I'm going to do it. Forgive me. Today was workout day. So I'm looking like I just came from the gym. Um, stand up. And um, I want you to really feel the energy in your body. Most of the time when we're entrepreneurs, we're worried about the future. So point to the future in front of you or we're beating ourselves over to the past, point to the past behind you. What, what you really need is to be anchored in the present. So I want you to pay attention to how it feels. Point to the future, point to the past, point to the future in front of you, point to the past. Notice how they feel. The future can feel scary, especially as weird as our world is right now. Um, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. The, the, the election energies got people stirred up. There's lots of drama. The economy is questionable. Inflation is there. We don't know, is the economy going to get stronger? Is it not? So there's a lot of anxiety in when the future is in front of you. And then sometimes we're beating ourselves up for past mistakes. Well, why am I so unfocused? And why can't I do this? And so-and-so did it. Why can't I? And we're beating ourselves up over the past. Well, we're going to switch that up. I want you to imagine and really imagine you're standing on your past. Every mistake that you made, I'm going to sit down so I can make sure you can see me. Every mistake that you made, you're standing on it. The past is the rock on which I stand. Those mistakes are the rock on which I stand. They have prepared me for the present moment. Feel how the past feels now. Then lift your arms straight up, almost in a V. And now I'm growing into the future. 
how does the future feel now? I'm growing into this incredibly conscious entrepreneur that builds a thriving business. I might not be there yet, but I'm growing into that person. I'm more clear. I know what to do. Feel how that feels. That's what we mean by centering in the present. The secret to being present is alignment, where you align your past underneath you and you align your present self in this moment, but you align your future as the person you are growing into. None of us are there yet. My businesses aren't as successful as I know they can be or as they will be, but I'm growing into the person that can help them get there. Feel how that feels. That is alignment. That is present alignment. What we've just done with these first two steps is we've prepared your mind and your energy to focus on exactly what you want to create. And again, watch those athletes. They are doing these exact kind of processes before the meet. Um, you know, when things don't go well in the meet, they have these ways of clearing their energy and getting themselves back in the present moment. One of my favorite athletes is Patrick Mahomes. He is the best at doing this. I've studied him ad nauseum because he's so good at it. And, and that's what they're doing. And so I'm giving you a process that I've deconstructed. These are the first two steps, which prepare your mind and your body to create success. So that's the first two steps. Third step is now we're going to claim what it is that we want. And the way that you do that is you're gonna use a prompt. So now that we're clear and we're centered, we're standing on our past, we're growing into our future. Now you use the prompt, I'm so happy and grateful now that, boom. And whatever comes up, comes up. Um, don't worry about the goal that you set a minute ago. Um, that was to prepare you. But when you when you say, I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm free. I'm so happy and grateful now that I've got a retainer client. I'm so happy and grateful now that I figured out how to uh, attract this niche. It could be something specific like that, but sometimes it's a little more generic. Sometimes it's, I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm in alignment. I'm so happy and grateful now that I feel free. So whatever comes up when you say that prompt, because you're in alignment, just trust it. Okay, ready, go, do the prompt. I'm so happy and grateful now that, and whatever comes up, comes up. Did anybody get a goal? You can come off a of mute for a second where you got something very specific. Mine wasn't, mine was just, I'm, I'm grateful to be in this program. <laughs> Perfect. So I'm so happy. And that means your soul saying, follow the methods, right? So I'm happy and so happy and grateful I'm in this program. Follow the methods, right? So that's perfect. Did anybody get like something very specific? Like I got that new retainer client. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Doesn't matter, but anybody get something specific? Um, I said that that was I'm so happy and grateful that I no longer have to rely on a job, but my business being able to take care of me. Perfect. So what that means is that is what your soul is claiming for you, Brandon. It's claiming it. it's time. It's time to make it happen. Anybody else get something very specific or something, a feeling or an energy or something like that? Um, for me, it was, uh, it's here. Perfect. So that's how close you are. It's a pinprick, right? It's a pinprick. Yeah. Love it. Okay. So that now you're in alignment with what it is you want to create. Your mind is in And think about how you feel right now. Do you feel more certain? Do you feel more certain than when we started this whole process? I'll bet you do. Do you feel that, that how your heart is pumping differently? Do you feel how your mind is thinking differently? That is the last step. And that is staying in a state of certainty. So I'm going to stand back up again. I want you to stand back up. Um, and again, forgive me because it is a workout day. So I cleared my energy, standing on my past. I'm growing into my future. I've claimed my desire. So for me, it's like, I'm so happy and grateful now that my business is moving forward. And now from that place, 
you're just going to basically start to picture it in your mind. And I like to do like a little, like the athletes do. If you think about they're listening to music and they got a little wiggle going on. I like to like picture it with a little wiggle, you know, and sometimes a little rocky, sometimes a couple of punches, a couple of victory, but you want to use your body with a picture in your mind so that you can anchor in your cells, the feeling of certainty, but you also can anchor it with a picture. Sometimes I'll also use a sound, a song with it. So I have a couple of songs that I use that are state songs. Songs really make it stick, but it's a combination of a visual picture. So I'm picturing what it means for my business to move forward. And it's the physical, like, yeah, baby, you know, a couple of claps. And then if you throw a song in there, you'll stay in a state of certainty. That is the process. Okay. If you're Shipco members, we run the Prosperity Challenge every couple of months. There's one that just started. You can sign up on the events page. If you're not a Shipco member, listen to this recording over and over again. Do this process. It takes five minutes, basically. Do it twice a day, once in the morning, once either in the afternoon or at night, again and again and again. And you will be shocked at how fast it works. And then again, come join us for other events. We've got the Intentional Entrepreneur Roadmap coming up. We've got Authentic Marketing coming up. We'd love to um, help you achieve your goals. Um, and the LEAP method is one of the ways in which we do that. So I hope you'll use it 